So here I am with somebody who is the first time person to ever be on this program three times. Oh. <laughs> Maureen, that's you. If you remembered when you were on city council, we had a couple of uh, interviews there. That was last year. And we mm -hmm. talked all about poverty issues and the city's role in it and all that kind of stuff. But now you're on for the third time and this time it's different. This time you're kind of the, you're the interim chief executive officer at Pillar Nonprofit Network, correct? When did you start there? In October. In October. And when were you fin You were finished right about then, correct? I, I, there was about a month where there was an overlap. So I finished at City Council about a month after I started at Pillar, almost exactly a month. Yeah. Uh, so I presume you kind of have mixed feelings eh, about City Hall. Do you still kind of miss it or are you, you're moving on pretty well? I've moved on. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, you know, it's... Uh, it's, a, for me anyway, a once in a lifetime job and experience, and it was extremely rewarding, very challenging, but you know, the if you're not challenged, then you're bored, really. Yeah. So, so no, it was, uh, it was a, it was a good experience overall. And I'm really glad I did it. And, you know, having that feeling of making a difference in your city is it to me, it's an important feeling. So no, uh, but it's, but it's, it was time for me to move on and here I am. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a pillar, a nonprofit network is going through a bit of a transition on its own. And so it was looking for somebody to kind of guide it. And they asked you to come on and, and do that, uh, which I think is really important and especially somebody with your experience, but can you just, uh, for any viewer, uh, who doesn't know, tell what pillar is. So we are a, a non or yes, a nonprofit, um, a charitable organization, but we are a network and member organization. And what we do is support uh, other organizations in the nonprofit sector in the London region. Um, we also play a role. And when they founded Pillar, they they um, their vision was that there are these three pillars, the, the public sector, the, the private sector and the nonprofit sector or the business yeah. sector and the nonprofit sector and pillar was seen uh, and the nonprofit sector is seen as that middle pillar and and uh and the nonprofit sector sort of brings the whole community together and that is pillar's role uh or the role that was conceived when pillar was first uh founded that idea of bringing all three sectors together to make a positive impact in the community yeah, and you know, I've been I've been in the city a long time, as you know, and I I remember back in the days there would be you know the business community, the corporate community, there would be government, uh, mm -hmm. which tended to play more of a role in things back then. But then there were all there's a kind of a mishmash of all these other groups out there, like a food bank or like a United Way or something like that, mm -hmm. plus a number of, of smaller agencies. And as things began to unravel a bit. And, and more groups started and, and more things began to take place, challenges, social economic challenges. Uh, there really was a need, uh, we really saw that even 30 years ago, there really was a need to try to bring all of those nonprofits together. Yeah. But what you're saying Pillar is doing actually is it's not just doing that, although that's very important to it. It is bringing in the government and the business sector into that space as well, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. That's how it was always uh, envisioned. And I think at this particular moment in time with everything that's going on in London and in the world and at Pillar in particular, um, it's it was it's, it was the right time for me to come in as a leader with the experience that I had had mm -hmm. both at local government and also in the organizations that I sat on at, with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and doing the work as well through Association of Municipalities of Ontario. So bringing all of those levels of government together and my experience in advocacy and working on policy as it related to all levels of government it's really helpful right now with what Pillar's going through. Yeah, no, that's true. And, uh, you know, you and I have been friends for a long time, but I remember when we were on the panel together about poverty, and I know we've uh, you know, cooperated on a number of different issues around that. 
But this show, Food Bites, is around, you know, food insecurity, but also poverty. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the Food Bank has been a member of Pillar for years, right? And I know you have Innovation Works. That's a gathering space for different groups to come from all of those sectors yeah. to meet and, and work on plans together. But it does seem to me that um, there's been a lot of change in the last three or four mm -hmm. decades in municipalities just in general. I mean, gone are the days when governments just kind of took care of things through mm -hmm. programming or corporate groups or business groups came in and helped with a lot of those kind of things. It seemed to me that there was a real need for coordination of all of those different things and especially around poverty. Like when yeah. I look at things like now, like homelessness, I mean, you don't look to the corporate sector to just solve that, right? Yeah. And, and I think people are increasingly despairing that the governing sector is not engaging in that the way that it should. On the other hand, within the community itself, there are just tons of different groups that are trying to come into that and trying to make a difference around homelessness as they wait for these larger policies or yeah. economic changes within a country to be able to take care of it. Do you feel that, that you're at Pillar, like you've known about Pillar for years, as have I, but it seems to me that social issues have really taken a, a spot of prominence in mm -hmm. a lot of the dialogue that we have now. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talk about government doing things well at the municipal level, especially there's so much on the plate of the municipal government and they're the most under resourced level of government financially. Um, but they're, you know, they're, they're on the ground and, and dealing with Londoners and the issues facing Londoners. And so when you talk about the, um, the food bank as an example of an agency in London that's doing some really, really good work. You you are an icon, You're not just Glenn Pearson, but the London Food Bank is an icon in London and an iconic organization. And you have a lot of the, the resources and connections and networks and things like that that help the Lennon Food Bank make a real impact. Speaking of um, connections to business and bringing all of the pillars together, you have your 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 connections and networks in all levels of government. And you have the Business Cares Food Drive that connects you there. But some of the smaller agencies in London don't have those resources. And that's where Pillar plays a role in making those connections for the smaller organizations and also bringing you, Glenn Pearson and the London Food Bank or someone like Andrew Lockie and the YMCA or um, Michelle Quinton and Goodwill, Kelly Zigner at, Un at, um, United, Way. at United Way, bringing you, you, you and your experiences and your wisdom and expertise together with these smaller organizations um, and providing that support and that networking and connection and things like that. So uh, it, it, Pillar kind of likes to see itself in that supporting role. How can we support and make the whole, um, the whole sector stronger and the community as well? Yeah. You know, and a good example of that, I guess, is the vertical wall or the green wall initiative that we've been working on with Pillar. I mean, Pillar isn't so much a deliverer of programs, right? What you really do is create the innovation, the ideas, the social enterprises, those kind of things. And you do it at your space there at Innovation Works. But really, you folks approached the food bank, you, you, you approached the Luis and I and said, you know, we're interested in trying to get all these other groups interested in food security downtown. Mm -hmm. and so you, you talked to us about possibilities. So the Green Wall came up. I remember that meeting very well a number of months ago. The Green Wall came up not as a program that, that Pillar was really going to get into to try to do a whole bunch of that, but it was a bit of a toe in the water. You know, mm -hmm. to say, could these organizations cooperate? And then maybe if more organizations cooperate in that, uh, then we would be able to provide fresh food to the feeding agencies that were downtown, which yeah. at that point and still are in the news all the time because of homelessness and, you know, economic challenges, so on and so forth. But there's a case in which you could have gone to a number of different places, but you went to the food bank and said, could you partner with us? Right, because you knew that Business Cares, for instance, had paid for the green walls yeah. uh, for the community in general. And you knew the food bank had something of a reach or uh, talking about food insecurity in the community. But what you wanted to do, in a sense, was start something different. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You didn't want to manage it. You didn't want it to be big. You weren't trying to become a, an urban agriculture place or whatever it is. You saw that in this gathering place, in which so many people have come to over the years, here was a chance to try to start something new. And, and you did it in, in, in a way in which I've already heard today, for instance, from a number of other groups who saw the video of the Green Wall with you and Luis uh, down at Innovation Works, and they're now asking for that to be at their place. Yeah. Now, they're not seeking to be urban agriculture specialists either. Right. They like the idea that we could help just a little bit if yeah. we pulled all of these things together. That to me seems to be exactly the roadmap that Pillar has always been on. Absolutely. And um, and the fact that it's at Innovation Works, which is the, the, the gathering space that we have in downtown London. So bringing people together, showcasing that wall, and it is beautiful as well, and it, and it has positive effects on everybody that comes in the space. And then starting that conversation and getting people thinking about not just a green wall and whether they can host that at their space, but also the whole conversation around food, around locally grown food, around providing fresh, healthy produce, no matter what it is, um, to Londoners here in London. And, and, and how can somebody become part of that conversation? So it, it's a starting point. Yeah, and, and I think that's what we're looking for because a lot of the stuff is still fairly new, like the greenhouse in London that we have is only three years old mm-hmm. and it was fairly formative at the time. But there's not a lot of that kind of stuff that's going on in London or some right. other municipalities and others it really is in places like Vancouver and others. But the point is, is that you can't have the food bank doing all of that stuff or the United Way or the others. It takes others who have this ability to draw a network of groups together to make that happen. And and that's what you've done. And I hear what you're saying about city. I mean, you know, I used to be in the federal government a number of years ago, and it always seems to me that the favorite thing the federal government is to, you know, put forward programs. It doesn't matter what party is in government. They put forward these ideas, so on and so forth. And meanwhile, cities through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities or the Ontario Municipalities Organization, they're coming to Ottawa all the time and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like we have a lot of these things going on. We have a lot of environmental initiatives going on of urban uh, urban agriculture and other things, anti-poverty initiatives. You need to support those things that we've already developed as a network across the country of municipalities. Often the senior levels of government don't do that, right? No. They don't take so much what you're saying. Often they try to come up with their own and then they download it. Yeah. So they will then download it to a province or the province downloads it to a city and says, okay, we have a plan. This is what happened around homelessness. We have a plan. We're going to set up so that the homeless can now be in halfway houses, yeah. right? These interim places and you as a city can then take care of those people. Yeah. And we will give you funding to help yeah. you to do that as we go through the transition. Well, they did part of that, but the funding never followed through. Yeah. Or they'll give you funding for a few years. (laughs) That's correct. So the difficulty is, as you say, like 80% of Canadians live in cities, Mm -hmm. right? So it would make sense that these things are very important. But I have noticed, I think, that, you know, in these uh, programs, we've been talking to a number of different mayors across the country. There is something different, Maureen, uh, and maybe you sense it too. But I think when COVID was going on, there was a sense within municipalities, hey, we could build back better. You know, we could we could start doing things differently because we were actually ground zero of the innovation movement, yeah. right? And municipalities across, across the country. And then COVID kind of waned and went away. And now what we got, what we have is people seem stuck. There's a lot of depression. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a, a, a lot of homelessness. There's a lot of people aren't sure what they're gonna do about employment. Yeah. And it seems to me that there needs to be a kind of, what's the right word for it? Social recovery. Yeah, absolutely. That happens. How does Pillar view that? That's that's our number one focus right now. So we're, we have a strategic plan that's a couple of years old. It was very much focused on, um, on diversity, inclusion, um, and equity, which is rightfully so. Um, we're starting to make a little bit of a shift where diversity, inclusion, and equity rather than being something standalone is something that should be and will be embedded in everything we do. So everything we think about, every everything we work on has diversity, inclusion, and equity in it. 
um, but in the short term, our focus is on social recovery. Uh, we have Paul Seal that works with us and he, and he focuses on policy. And his mantra is there is no, there can be no economic recovery without social recovery. And you know what the economic driving organizations in London, they've, they've recognized this for a very long time, even pre COVID. Um, you know, downtown is a microcosm of the city. As downtown goes, that's how London goes, um, because so much is 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 based on downtown. So much of the economic drivers, so much of the um, the health of the city is focused on is comes from downtown. So if if the downtown is not healthy, the city is not really healthy. So it's like having a bad heart or heart condition, right? Um, so with pillar being in the, in the heart of downtown and working with many of the agencies that are focused on the core the old east village area and the downtown area that social recovery is so vital to our entire community i think with covid London, as you know, uh, from the work you've done, and also I learned this through our work on the poverty panel, that London was had an outsized um, participation rate in volunteerism. Like the Londoners volunteered, and Londoners uh, wanted to be involved in their community and do good. Across the country, that volunteer base has been destroyed because people weren't allowed to volunteer unless it some very very s focused and s specific organizations that were considered you know frontline mandatory but so many people that had been volunteering their time at agencies at their churches at their schools they they were told to stay home so that is a, a is a big priority for pillar right now that alone just rebuilding that volunteer base and that was part of and we did a verbal submission to the minister of finance in saint thomas a few weeks ago and we're doing a written submission we get to do something longer we only had three minutes to do it verbally um and that is uh one of our one big focus is getting the, the the provincial government to support a strategy for rebuilding volunteerism in the province because that the sector relies so heavily on volunteers and they've they've all gone home really so let's flip that for just a minute when COVID hit the food bank was asked to stay open and fulfill this emergency role which it did and uh it was a lot, you know, poor, poor Jane, my wife Jane had to go down and reformat all of how the food bank works down, yeah. the management of it and stuff. But we had a database of a few thousand volunteers there. That actually went up during wow. COVID. So what happened during that time was because the food bank was able to stay open and because everybody had to wear masks, there were protocols we had to follow. We have the health unit on our board at the food bank. So yeah. they were kind of mapping out how we do all of that. But what was amazing to us was just how many people were coming and wanting to do it because other places were shut down and it was different. It was harder yeah. for them. It didn't mean that they favored the food bank, let's say over their church or something else. It was just that this was a place that was open and they really yeah. wanted to help. Yeah. So I, I do think that when you talk about social recovery, I think that's important, but I also think there has been damage. Oh, yeah. I, I do think there's damage in our social fabric and our social oh, yes. even in London. You really see that in the, in the homeless file, oh, but yeah. it's also there in other things as well. So Pillar's role, I think, and I'm seeing this is not so much to just let's get back to that. Let, let, yeah. Let's let let's look at it and let's develop that recovery. We used to do that as food banks. We would always say, well, once the recession is over, <laughs> our numbers will go back to where they were. That never happened. Mm -hmm. Right. At recession after recession after recession, it kept getting worse. Yeah. So I think what Pillar is trying to do here that I can see is that there has been damage even in Pillar a bit even in the food bank a bit or some of the other organizations that was a strange time with COVID, Absolutely. right and we were all trying to develop better ways to respond but we have to clear up some of that damage mm -hmm. and i think when it came to things like homelessness right there, there was a real desire for people to do things different but also we spent a lot of years kind of ignoring that sector 
Oh, and sure. Ignoring of it created damage. And now we want to create that into something better. How do you see Pillar's role in that damage piece as far as the other agencies in the city goes? The way I look at where where I want to go as a leader right now at Pillar is not to go back to where we were. You know, it's it, you know we've had some challenges lately with um, with the um, the former CEO at Pillar, Mojde Cox, uh, leaving, and some of the challenges that the board has faced with community anger and backlash around that decision and around how that decision was handled. So we have as an organization, and this is not talking about that decision or talking about the board at all, but just pillar as the organization. We don't want to go backwards to pre pre summer of 2022. Yeah. We the only way I see in any way going backwards at all is going back to what pillars potential was. Um, did we ever really achieve that potential? Did we veer off track? So, so what was pillars potential at the beginning? Um, what, what is our potential now? And what role do we as an organization have to play in that community healing? Um, what role, whether through implicit things or complicity even without being conscious about it in in some of the the um the issues around equity and lack thereof in the city of london and in pillar in particular what role did we as an organization play and this isn't about pointing fingers at anybody at any individual it's about truly looking for healing um and that's just as we when we were setting out our first mission and vision for the poverty panel um we defined what poverty was to us as a panel and it was a community issue that was going to require a, a whole of community approach and it's it's like that with pillar as well it's it's an organizational and structural and systemic issues that are just built into society in general and pillar is part of society. So how does pillar work with the community, the entire community of pillar, the members, the tenants, the staff and anybody, there are a lot of people that feel an, an emotional investment in pillar. So how do we bring all of those people together for a collective reckoning and a collective healing? I think that that's really smart. I I, uh, I understand the difficulties pillars had to face, but you know there are food banks across the country that had similar things happen. Right? There was so much pressure, so much going on, and it was really difficult. And sometimes mistakes were made, or some food banks actually because of the demand have had to close, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just so much. Like it's very hard to operate and function well in yeah. that kind of crisis setting. It's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. However, what I have noticed, not just here, but in other cities across the country, it's that that coming back together yeah. is often the part that's missing. Mm -hmm. When COVID came, everybody kind of scattered, mm -hmm. right? And tried to survive. Everybody's in survival mode, including citizens, Absolutely. right? And companies and others. But now it's time to come back together. There are many that are adopting a wait and see attitude, mm -hmm. right? I I'm seeing that everywhere. And they're wanting to know if they come back to something now, will it actually be better than what was there before? And so they're waiting to see that happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Right. It's not. The way it's going to happen is by groups like Pillar actually calling them together. Absolutely. You have such a great space there at Innovation Works, but I can't tell you how many um, meetings I've had around poverty and food security, dozens of them that were all at Innovation Works, yeah. which is run by Pillar. Like you guys always did that. It, it was really great. But it seems to me, unless it's the same with democracy and everything else, if people aren't going to vote, if they're not going to gather, whatever it is, we begin to lose the overall arch of our story as a people. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me, if there any group that could bring that together, it is Pillar, because you try to be a multi-sectoral group mm -hmm. that was doing that in the first place. Do you feel that as a burden on you that, you know, it really is up to you folks to be able to help us to get this straight because a lot of us aren't getting it right. Or do you see it as just something that you need to do as an organization? It's absolutely something we need to do. Uh, it, what I've been doing for the last three and a bit months is 
meeting with everybody that will meet with me, really, uh, everybody in the nonprofit sector, uh, new counselors, um, some city staff, uh, and, and actually I'm, I want to meet with the, the, the CAO uh, uh, in St. Thomas as well, because Pillar has a regional reach as well. So just um, hearing from as many different people as possible and getting their perspectives on on everything that they want to talk to me about. And um, a lot of what I have heard from different people is, is how Pillar almost, is, you talk about taking on burden, almost was too big, almost was the the perception and then and i'm not saying that anybody did this on purpose that any past leader uh stepped outside of their bounds or anything but there was a perception that pillar tried to be all things to all people too too much um and so our focus right now with everything that's going on is to be very very focused and to drive try to be really clear in what that focus is so people understand uh what we think we can do uh and mostly what we want to do is collaborate and partner with other organizations um because you know nothing's going to happen if everybody tries to do it themselves yeah. it, it's it's about coming together as a community and working together using everybody's into each organization's individual strengths and yeah. And, and making a, an impact. Yeah, I really, I can see that so totally what you're saying, because when the pandemic came, I mean, the food bank could have taken on a lot of things because it was still open, it could do it. It was Jane that was very prudent about, look, at, we have to be able to function for when it's all over. Yes. Right? Yes. That, that's the key. So if we deplete everything we have right now, then it might be harder later. And she shrewdly you know, got us to that point to, so now that that's there, unlike other food banks, we're not struggling in that way. She was prudent in not trying to start too many initiatives or any of those kind of things. But the initiatives we did start were all collaborative and, and had a real chance to survive. But Maureen, I, you know, I, I just think that uh, with your experience of what you've done with the city, and I think with Pillar's background and what its mandate is, I understand that it maybe took on a lot I understand the food bank took a lot, so did, so did other agencies and groups. We were trying to help our community, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of it fell to us. But now that that has not worked out as well in our cities because you know it needs everybody yeah. to make it work, not just one or two groups that are functioning. I really think that the, the groups that will succeed will be the groups that collaborate, mm -hmm. and not just innovate. But they don't do their own thing and try to do something new and off they go as they actually collaborate with other groups to make that happen. Absolutely. I can't see anybody better doing that than Pillar. Well, good. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for your confidence in, in Pillar. Well, it's not it's not just confidence. It is lived experience. I've had that in the past. I yeah. mean, how many meetings have you and I had mm -hmm. when you were part of the city and I was the food bank or whatever it is at Innovation Works and with Pillar and Pillar yeah. leading those things, right? So, I mean, we learned in the past what collaboration was about in part through Pillar. Mm -hmm. So if it can help us to get back to that, don't step out and watch or observe, Absolutely. get back in and take part. And it seems to me that Pillar has a role to play there. I really appreciate you doing this, Marina. And I know that as a community, we are aware that we need to do better. Mm -hmm. We need leaders who can help us to do that. Mm -hmm. And I really thank you that even on this interim basis, you stepping in and helping Pillar to move forward and through this time, I think is really important. And, and I'd appreciate it if you just pass along to Pillar that we depend on them for a lot. And uh, the, the point is they're not stuck. They, they do the green wall project, right? Yeah. You're still going on with other things. You're not, you're not just lying around trying to figure out what you're gonna do next. You're taking action. We really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. hey, thanks to them all. Thanks, I will pass that along for that's, sure. That's great. All right, thanks, Marie. Thanks, Glenn.